Greetings to you, members and friends of Highland Congregational Church, to this worship and communion experience on the Lord's Day. I once again extend to you, may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you, and I invite you as well to reach and extend to someone else, if not today, could be tomorrow or through the week, whenever, so that you express again the peace that you have come to know in Christ Jesus. A reminder that there is music offerings uh, on our uh, location in U on YouTube, and so I invite you to do that uh, and to see them. Uh, this is the Lord's Day. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We come to celebrate uh, this worship and our faith together uh, with communion, the Lord's Supper, and to share that we recognize whether we are together in one place or apart, that we belong to each other in Christ Jesus. And this communion binds us together. I'd like to share with you as we think about the future uh, these words that are taken from the prophet Isaiah. In the 44th chapter, it reads, This is what the Lord says, Israel's King and Redeemer, the Lord Almighty, I am the first and I am the last. Apart from me, there is no God. Who then is like me? Let him proclaim it. Let him declare and lay out before me what has happened since I established my ancient people, and what is yet to come. Yes, let him foretell what will come. May this blessed word speak to our hearts and our minds, our spirits. This is the word of a Lord that leads us into this time together. This word, God saying, if you know better, look ahead, look forward. How do we know what's before us? How many of us could have predicted that we would be in the state, not only of health and well-being in this pandemic, but even our economy and the struggles that we endure? So many people out of work, all wondering, what difference do they make in this world? Well, today, again, I remind us that we do make a difference in this world because as a nation, Having celebrated just yesterday, Independence Day, today, once again, I'm speaking on freedom. Freedom as a people, freedom as persons, followers of Jesus. All asking ourselves, who knows what is yet to come from us? Now, we know that we look sometimes for things to happen. We look to our nation as a corporate body but we forget how important it is as individuals to make a difference in this world. And we forget the impact that we can have that can be from generations. Now, a Professor Tom Long once told of a story of a man who had made a choice for himself long ago in St. Galen, Switzerland. Now, uh, first in his life, he was a teacher, an elementary school teacher. But then after marrying Alice Federer, he began to think about changing professions, and he did in 1939. He changed careers to make more money and to support his family. He became a mid-level police official and where he was called to fill out reports and arranged different documents and security details. One day, arriving at his work, he encountered a notice at his door. It read, you are no longer have the right to enter these premises. Your service is no longer needed. Well, he was bewildered, but in his heart he knew that maybe he had been found out. He had been secretly altering documents for Jews who were being oppressed, and he was assisting them to flee to Austria by predating their passports prior to 1938. And I guess somebody found out and he lost his job. He was dismissed. He was disgraced in the community by many. And in poverty, he finally died in 1972 and his last work was peddling raincoats. 
Well, we never know what impact our actions can have on others. Because as we hear of someone who made a choice, a decision on behalf of others to save their lives, how it cost him personally and his family. And that's something we're not always certain of whether we're willing to take those kinds of risks. But Jesus understood that there are times when we may sense that we will do th greater things than we could have ever imagined or envisioned. Jesus envisioned his disciples to be empowered in and through his spirit to go on. And today I read to you as well the word that is taken from the gospel according to John in the 14th chapter. And this is what Jesus was telling his disciples. He said, I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me would, will do what I have been doing. He or she will do even do greater things than these because I am going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. May this blessed word speak to our hearts and our minds and our spirits. This is the word of the Lord and thanks be to God for this word. I think the question that comes for us, when, when does, do lives make a difference? And it usually is when we are involved with others, involved in community, involved sometimes even within family, and especially when it can make a difference in their lives. This man of just whom I read, we know that he may have had some disgrace in his community but there would be always those who had benefited by what he was willing to risk and do for them that would allow them to flee and to find refuge. And his name may be still spoken in within families of that person who made a difference in their lives. Now, we're not always sure, as we see today, people on the streets. Now, we may not always agree with the way people do things or what they do, but we know that some people with good intentions are standing out to say, we care about what's happening to others, trying to make a difference. Now, there are those who are people in action, and there are those who are people who are merely bystanders. And we have to decide if we are in Christ, who are we? People of action or merely bystanders? Some years ago, I read of a gentleman who had been buried in a small town, in a town called Whiston. And this is what was placed on his tombstone when he passed away. He kept shop at Whiston, and that's all. Now, we can know that it's not just all, but it's how we not only are seen by others, but more importantly, how we see ourselves. What can we do that makes a difference? And we discover that it's about making choices in our life, decisions, and then doing something in those choices and decisions. As a free nation, we've been called to be free, to choose to do what we do. Sometimes it might be to protest. Sometimes it might be in our place to take an action. But always to begin to think about others as Christ Jesus knew that his ministry was reaching to others, touching people's lives, and knowing, saying, you will do if you do what I am doing, but you will even do greater things. And that's hard sometimes for us to imagine. We're not certain what that word greater means, but it might be greater for our own lives in relationship of what we might not have done. More importantly, that we find ourselves with the opportunity to make differences in the world. Now we know that people have made tough choices in their lives and maybe history has said they might not have made the best choices. We have seen in recent weeks that monuments have been challenged. Some of them have been altered and torn down. 
But I remember these words of a John Motley back in the 1800s. He said this that I think puts us in perspective. Deeds, not stones, are the true monuments of the great. Deeds that will be remembered in hearts and minds and spirits. Jesus recognized the real power for us as his followers, as disciples, that it's what we do, not so much what we say. It's very easy for us to speak the words of Jesus, to refer to them, to point to them. But what is most difficult at times is for us to do what Christ, we sense Christ is calling us to do, to make the right choices. A 16th century believer in Christ once said, his name was John Fletcher, deeds, not words, shall speak. Those, that's what's heard. That's what's understood. To see what people do. For us to know that we can make a difference all by making a choice in the freedom that we so celebrate and revere. For us to acknowledge how important it is for us to have the freedom to do, even if later we might regret, or maybe we would regret not doing, but somehow that we would know, as was written on a great cathedral, our deeds have a longer life than our words. For us to know how important it is, for us to be participating in this world. And I know that I'm speaking this in the context of many of you being at home, but sometimes you may recognize that it's the small decisions that you make that can really make a difference. A Jewish proverb once said, do not be wise in words, be wise in deeds. What we do every day and especially as it relates to those around and about us. Our Lord Jesus invites us to look out into the world and to see people as he sees them, not as we see them, but as God sees them, as beloved. And so in this time of celebrating our nation, celebrating our freedom, we recognize that it's about people having as long before and as now and still to come choices that they can make and that will make a difference in people's lives. Now here today we have gathered at this the table of our Lord Jesus Christ but I want us not to forget that Jesus not only invites us but from this table he sends us sends us out into the world where we can make a difference. So it's beyond just the touch, the smell of this communion. It's the spirit in which we do it. And so I invite you now to this table of our Lord Jesus Christ. All of you are invited. This is the table of our Lord Jesus Christ, not my table, not our table, but the table of our Lord, who invites all who believe in him, who trust in him, to come and to eat of this bread and to drink of this cup. So people come from east and west and north and south. Wherever you are located in this moment, you are a part of the people of God when you participate with this table, the elements that are here today. So let us be reminded again of what we enjoy and what we celebrate in and through the words that we have come to know but first, let us pray. Most blessed God, our thanksgiving is to you for your blessed word that reminds us of who we are in light of our relationship with your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us his Spirit to do great things beyond what we might ordinarily do. But Lord, help us to know that that may come at any moment and that we understand that we're called especially as you come beside us and we are in communion with you through this bread and this cup this day. Now we celebrate today and we give thanks always in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took this bread and, give, and gave thanks and said to his disciples, this is my body 
broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant sealed in my blood. This do in remembrance of me. For as often as we, his disciples, we eat of this bread and we drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death and his life again until he comes into our hearts once again. And now let us be served. Our Lord Jesus said to his disciples, to us, I am the bread of life. The one who comes to me will never hunger. The one who believes in me will never thirst. With his disciples, he said to them, take, eat. This is my body. When Jesus had the cup, saying it was a new covenant, he reminded his disciples that he was the vine and they were the branches, and in him they could go and bear much fruit, and remember that apart from him, we can do very little. So what we do, where we go, is because of Jesus Christ taking hold of us in and through this communion. And he said to his disciples, this cup is a new covenant, drink ye all from it. How truly blessed we are. Please join with me once again as we pray. Oh, blessed God, we know that in any moment in our lives, we might falter. We might flee. We might turn our backs. But Lord, we know that in and through this communion, you embolden us in your Holy Spirit, reminding us of who we are, your beloved and your followers, to be sent out into the world. And Lord, I pray that the blessings of joy will remain with us and peace as we celebrate this table here today and always. These things we pray in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And now hear these words. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and grant you his peace both now and in the life everlasting. Amen.